ATMC TV's Game of the Week is brought to you by J.P. Russ and Son Grading and Clearing, Community Finance of South Carolina, Rissatown Longwood Fire and Rescue's Haunted Trail, The Doghouse Grill 2, Strand Termite and Pest Control, The Brunswick Beacon, and ATMC. Welcome to Gary Bishop Stadium on the campus of North Brunswick High School for the ATMC TV High School Football Game of the Week featuring the visiting West Brunswick Trojans against the North Brunswick Scorpions. I'm Sam Hickman, joined by ATMC TV's finest, Mr. Jay Combs. West Brunswick enters tonight's contest on the heels of a 7-0 shutout victory over 4A Ashley last week in Shalote. With the win and their conference opener, the Trojans improved to 1-4 on the season. Here we are almost midway through the 2017 campaign. The Trojans limited the Screaming Eagles last week to 53 yards of total offense and of course zero points in what was one of the best defensive performances in recent memory by West Brunswick. Jay, it felt like every time we looked up last week, senior linebackers Russ Gore and Jakari Bethel were making tackles. <laughs> Sam, when you make a combined 37 tackles, which is exactly what Gore and Bethel did last week, yeah, it does seem like they made all the tackles. They had a great game, and uh, Hunter Nickel from the linebacker position also helped out quite a bit. West changed defenses last week. They went to a 5-0 alignment. In that alignment, the big guy in the middle, and I mean big, Monty Stanley at 6'5", 330 pounds, really forced things to the linebackers in Bethel and Gore and Nickel and company did a really good job of cleaning up. Uh, offensively, West only scored one touchdown. That turned out to be enough to win their contest. Jakari Bethel was involved offensively last week, uh, and he's had over 200 yards on the year rushing. But uh, Casey Medford is the leading rusher for the Trojans coming into tonight's game with 360 yards on the year. And everybody offensively that makes a go, it's Owen McDowell. And I think Owen can hurt you as much with his legs as he can with his arm. He made a couple of good plays last week, getting out of trouble, keeping drives aligned with those legs. So look for him to play a good game here tonight offensively for the Trojans. And Jay, on the other hand, North Brunswick comes into this rivalry game young, inexperienced, and banged up. The Scorpions enter the game with an 0-5 record, including a 50-0 loss in their conference opener last week on the road against Laney. Jay, we saw this Scorpion team a few weeks ago, and it's clear, despite the 0-5 record, head coach Darren Willis has his team and new quarterback DJ Perry heading in the right direction. Well, DJ better be ready. Uh, DJ Perry is being pressed into service tonight because of the injury to the sophomore Lee Harrington. Harrington's got a great arm, got a big upside, but he's hurt and will not play tonight. So a senior steps into that very important quarterback slot, DJ Perry, and you like to have some experience and veteran leadership, which he can provide. He's got a good receiver in Davion Trillo, 5'10", junior, not real heavy at 145 pounds. Great hands. He's caught 10 passes this year for 251 yards and a pair of scores. Defensively, watch this kid. He's really fun. Number 51, Austin Wallace. 5'6", 155 pounds, junior, and he's a linebacker, and he leads the area in tackles with 52 on the season, including three tackles for a loss. He had 21 tackles in their uh, game against East Bladen. And the other guy to keep an eye on tonight, if you're watching North Brunswick, is number one, Michael Rivers, six foot, 160 pound senior. He is the place kicker and the punter. He leads the area in punting, averaging 42 yards per kick, and he's made two or three field goals. So he is a weapon, and I got a feeling uh, if this turns into a defensive battle, which it very well may, we'll see a lot of Mr. Michael Rivers here this evening. And Jay, there's a little extra buzz in the stadium tonight. It's always a lot of fun when two Brunswick County teams square off, and tonight should be no different. West Brunswick has won eight of the last nine matchups between these two schools. North Brunswick trying to knock off West for the first time since 2013 on your ATMC TV Game of the Week. Stay with us for the opening kickoff.
Jay, it is rivalry night on our ATMC TV High School Football Game of the Week. We're coming to you from Gary Bishop Stadium, almost set for opening kickoff. That will happen from the 35-yard line instead of the 40. North Brunswick whistled for a five-yard penalty before the game has even started. How's that happen, partner? Uh, Sam Hickman, when uh, things are going bad, uh, things are going bad, and they have sure. not been going particularly well for North Brunswick here uh, the past couple of weeks. So off to a rather ominous beginning here this evening with a penalty before the game even starts. But watch their kicker, number one, Mike Rivers, see if he doesn't make that five yards up plus on this opening kickoff. Jay, it appears as if he might try some kind of directional kick. He's only about four yards behind the ball. So we've seen a lot of those short diagonal pop-up kicks this year. We'll see if North Brunswick employs that on the opening kickoff of the game. I think the officials are still waiting. This is a big band at North Brunswick. Takes him a while to get off the field. Looks like time for football. And Jay, we're a little closer to the earth than we were last time we were in Leland for a North Brunswick game. It is a short high kickoff. It's bobbled by West Brunswick, but it's picked up. That's Khalil Bland. He's got running room. He's across midfield and brought down at the opposing 45-yard line. And the Trojans will have excellent starting field position. Uh, Khalil Bland, the six-foot, 165-pound senior, kind of muffed the return or, or the uh, catching the catching the kick to start with, but the ball bounced right back to him. And, he certainly knew what to do when he had a little bit of daylight. Gives the Trojans great field position to start their first offensive possession of the night. And Jay, these two teams couldn't be coming off different games. West shut out Ashley and is 1-0 in the league. North Brunswick shut out at Laney, 0-1 in the league, as Medford takes the opening handoff across the 45, down to the 44. We'll give them two yards to set up a second and an eight. Case in Medford is the leading rusher for West Brunswick coming into tonight's game, 360 yards on the year. I think he had 200 of those yards in one game. I believe it was against Whiteville. Whiteville, yeah, but, 209. But Medford, tough guy to bring down. West Brunswick in a heavy set. That handoff goes to Medford as well. He's got more running room. He's dragged down at the 39. A five-yard gain for Medford, and that's going to set up a third and three for the Trojans in North Brunswick territory. Nice tackle that time by number 34, Quasi Clark. Young guy. There's a lot of youngsters on this North Brunswick squad. Clark, a 5'10 sophomore, came up from his cornerback position to take down Medford, which is no easy feat. He's a tough guy. Jay, I know it's early, but are we thinking four downs from this position on the field? Certainly would think they're in that area, Sam. Another handoff to Medford. That's three in a row to start the game. A nice open field tackle by the Scorpions. Sorry, Jay, it was tough for me to see who made the hit there, but Medford very close to the marker. It is going to be a fourth down, but fourth and less than one for West Brunswick. Yeah, I'm not sure who got that stop for North Brunswick, I think, might have been number 16, Trayvon Willis. But we are a pretty good distance away from the field here this evening. Jay, pretty big play here. Less than two minutes into the game. West has got a fourth and one. McDowell's got it straight over the center. A quarterback sneak. He's across the 35, where it is a West Brunswick first down. Well, we talked about in the pregame, Owen McDowell's ability with his legs, and there you saw it on that particular play, just going up behind a good charge off the middle of that West Brunswick offensive line. 55 at the center position, Gabe Lewis and a couple of good guards, uh, Timmy Sellers and Tyler Long helped clear the way. That's a tall sweep to number six, Jalen Jones Bay, looking for running room. He is slung down. We'll give him a yard on the play. Jones Bay brought down at the 33, one yard gain on the tall sweep. And credit number two, Josh Hall. Again, one of those secondary players uh, from his safety position came up, made the stop on Jones Bay and uh, kind of swung him down. A little 360 tackle there by uh, by the senior Josh Hall. 
West Brunswick in another heavy formation. McDowell takes the snap, hands it to Medford. He slithers his way up the middle. He's still on his feet. Medford is down the far sideline, and he's dragged down inside the 10. A big run for Medford there of more than 25 yards, and West Brunswick's in business. Well, that's, that's vintage Medford. On that particular run, he was hit and just kind of shook off that attempt. And then once he got to some daylight, showed some good speed, caught from behind by number 34, Clark. Otherwise, West Brunswick would be on the board with their first score of the night. Jay, here's a fun note. Medford had 23 yards rushing in total last week against Ashley. He picked up 32 on that carry there to set up West Brunswick first and goal at the north one. McDowell goes for the quarterback sneak. He's across the goal line for a West Brunswick touchdown. Three minutes and 27 seconds into the game, and the Trojans have seized an early 6-0 lead here at Gary Bishop Stadium on your ATMC TV game of the week. Boy, a good solid uh, possession offensively for the Trojans on that drive. Everything on the ground, the big play, Medford's 32-yard run. And then old McDowell goes behind the big offensive line to get the first score of the night. Hunter Yachts extra point attempt splits the uprights and it's good. So with 8.33 left here in the first quarter, it's West Brunswick seven, North Brunswick zero. Oy J, seven running plays, cover 46 yards in three minutes and 27 seconds. And that is undoubtedly the best opening drive of the season for the Trojans. Well, remember last week, it took them four quarters to score once. They've taken less than four minutes to score here in this contest tonight against North. And North uh, continues to struggle 50 points last week against Laney and uh, give up an early score here tonight against West. Well, let's see what the Scorpions can do on this kickoff, uh, see if they can't quickly get back into this game. And Jay, of course, nothing new for this North Brunswick team. We were here about three weeks ago when North Brunswick hosted North Johnston, got down early, was down 19 to nine midway through the third quarter, and the Scorpions came storming back. A lot of football left is my point. Well, yeah, and if you're gonna be down by a score, it's best to be down when you've got, you know, more than three and a half quarters to play, right? So lots of time left for sure. Uh, probably feel a little better if Lee Harrington was uh, the quarterback tonight because we've seen the talent he has, but he's injured, got hurt in the second quarter last week and that loss to Laney. But that's gonna give an opportunity. It's gonna be a squib kick by Yaus. It's fielded by Bullock. He's around the left side. He's got running room. Bullock still on his feet, still on his feet all the way inside the West Brunswick 35 yard line. And just like that, the Scorpions are in business. It's all it takes. There's three facets to football. Offense, defense, special teams. Special teams are so very important. And you saw on that particular play, that the good run back gives North Brunswick some life here. And that was a, kind of a, a touchdown saving tackle that time by Devontae Frank of West Brunswick. Otherwise, we got a tie game, Bullock. A good return, and again, another youngster, Sam, only a sophomore. First and 10 on the West Brunswick 30-yard line. Our first look at North Brunswick. New quarterback, DJ Perry, the ball's on the ground, and it's going to be a 10-yard loss on the opening offensive play of the game for North Brunswick. Boy, after the momentum, after the 40-yard kick return, North Brunswick shoots itself in the foot with an errant snap that Perry DJ Perry wasn't able to corral. It's going to be an eight yard loss. The ball is marked at the 38 yard line of West Brunswick. So it's going to set up a second and 18. Big pressure that time by Tyler Tate from his linebacker position. Uh, 38 yard line. That's going to be a quarterback keeper into the teeth of the West Brunswick defense. No gain on the play from Perry. Jay, guess what? 44 Russ Gore in on that first tackle. Well, Sam, get used to that. Uh, as an OUR, no Russell play. Gore, outstanding no linebacker. And, and not only is this kid a fine, fine football player, but maybe even more importantly, he is an excellent student. I believe he is right there at the top, if not the top, 
of his class academically. So Russ scored total package. Yeah, Jay, Russ really embodies the term student athlete. That's Perry on the keeper. He's met at the line by 44. Gore, who was that initially? 81, Easton Simmons also in on that tackle. That's a loss of three on the quarterback keeper, and the West Brunswick defense pushes the North Brunswick offense backwards. The Scorpions lost 11 yards on three plays there, of course, highlighted by the loss of eight on the errant snap on first down. So the promising kick return by Jaheim Bullock. Forget it now. It's going to be up to Michael Rivers to try to pin West Brunswick deep in their territory, and this young man has the capability of doing it. The leading punter in the area averages 42 yards per kick. Well, Jay, we saw him punting pregame. He's going to have to take something off of this to keep it inside the 20-yard line. A nice high spiral punt, and Jay, you can't script that any better. A beautiful job by North Brunswick's Michael Rivers to pin the Trojans inside the 10. It's going to be marked about the nine and a half. 10 yard line so if the Trojans are going to score on their second possession they're going to have to go much longer than they did on their opening oh, drive. That's for sure and that's the the importance of having an excellent kicking game and Michael Rivers certainly embodies that. As you were saying Sam we were watching him in pregame and he was knocking them in from 50 55 yards effortlessly and not only the distance but the height of the ball so he's a weapon and certainly uh showed it on that particular kick. That's the Monty Daniels, who we didn't see last week. Daniels has got room around the left side, still on his feet, slung out of bounds, shy of the 40-yard line. And already we see West Brunswick just getting chunks of yardage on the ground. This was our first look tonight at number 20, DeMonte Daniels. And Jay's a little bit of a change of pace back when you compare him to the likes of Case and Medford. Yeah, Mason, uh, Case and Medford wants to run over top of you. The <laughs> Daniels wants to run over around you and when you've got speed like DeMonte has it gives you that ability to do that so he is a weapon if he can get to the outside if he can beat you on the edge he can do some damage that's the, our first look at number 42 Jakari Bethel and a really nice job I think that was Bryce DeBerry number 30 on the tackle for North Brunswick I think you're absolutely right another young guy an underclassman a junior does such a fine job for Coach Darren Willis's defensive unit. And you mentioned Bethel. We talk a lot about his defensive prowess, but he does have over 200 year, 200 years, 200 yards on the year, rushing. And Coach Kelly Williamson likes to look to Jakari for those uh, tough short yards. West Brunswick behind the chains for the first time tonight. That handoff goes to Bethel. He's still on his feet across the 45, brought down at the 47. Jay, that's going to be very close to the 47-yard line, which is the line to gain. I'm standing right on top of it. It is going to be a first down and a big chunk of yardage from Bethel, who was instrumental in the running game in West Brunswick's win last week. Well, that's a nice run by Jakari for sure. But I'll tell you what, if you look downfield, I saw 77, Monty Stanley. I saw 65, Tyler Long. I'm not sure, but I may have seen 61, oh, Tim Sellers, all seven, eight yards downfield, holding on to their blocks and allowing Jakari to get those yards. McDowell hands that ball on the inside to DeMonte Daniels. Daniels has got running room. Brought down at the 31 or 32 yard line for a big gain of more than 20 yards. So DeMonte Daniels, two carries into this one, is approaching 50 rushing yards. Well, and you, you know, you pound, pound, pound in the middle, and then you fake it to the up back. You hand it off to the speedy Daniels, who made a nice cut himself that time and just gets down the field real quick. This is uh, a little different looking. West Brunswick offensive attack, at least early on tonight compared to what we saw a week ago against Ashley. And Jay, it feels like West is in a nice tempo here offensively. They're getting to the ball, really snapping it quickly. That's a deep pass, receivers open. Oh, and it's batted down, batted away at the last moment by the North Brunswick defensive back. Excellent play there by North Brunswick defensive back. I believe that's Trayvon Willis the junior free safety who knocked that away at the last moment. Please help me if I'm wrong there, partner. Pretty sure it was uh, Trayvon Willis Excellent with the good play defensive play. The intended receiver, was that Easton Simmons? Again, these guys are a long way from us, whoever it was. That was a well-thrown ball by McDowell and just credit the good play defensively by Willis. Up here around the right end, 30. 
That's Noah Johnson on the carry for West Brunswick, and he's brought down after a short gain. Looks like Johnson picked up two to the North Brunswick 28, and that's going to set up a third and eight situation. Jay, another offensive lineman I haven't heard mentioned yet that's doing a good job for West Brunswick is number 64, Casey Holler. He was about five yards downfield on that play trying to lead the way for Johnson. Well, the O-line is doing a pretty solid job here this evening as witnessed the success West has had running the football. That time, though, North Brunswick really did a good job of stringing them out. McDowell fakes the handoff, rolls out to his left. He's got a man open. That's Medford who makes the catch. He's across the marker, fighting for extra yardage, and he's knocked out of bounds inside the 20-yard line where it is another West Brunswick first down. Good block that time by Tyler Long, allowed Owen McDowell to have just enough time to find number nine, Kaysen Medford, out of the backfield, and Medford picks up some good yards. Again, another good tackle that time. Trayvon Willis, otherwise Bedford might still be running. So West Brunswick doing a good job here of uh, a little change of pace, putting the ball up in the air, moving the chains. That handoff goes to Bethel. He's got running room around the left side, makes a couple defenders miss. He's brought down inside the five yard line and Jay, I believe that's gonna be another West Brunswick first down. You were talking early about West getting yards here early in chunks. They're really gashing the Scorpion defensive unit right now. And certainly uh, this is West Brunswick football, the way the Trojans played the last couple of years, rebuilding this year and looking pretty good tonight. Owen oh, McDowell pulls it. He's looking for running room around the left side. He jumps up, leaps for the goal line, and crosses it for a West Brunswick touchdown. 3.15 left in the first quarter, and McDowell keeps it on the quarterback read option play for his third rushing touchdown of the season. So eight minutes and 45 seconds into this one, and the Trojans have stormed their way to a 13-0 lead as Hunter Yance comes on for the extra point attempt. Again, McDowell showing his versatility, athleticism. And Yance showing a pretty good foot. Is that one through it is? Yeah, Jay, we spoke a lot about Michael Rivers, you know, this season and his kicking capabilities and He's certainly one of the area's finest place kickers and punters, but Hunter Yance two for two on extra point attempts tonight. Well, Hunter's done a solid job for West this year, assuming those uh, place kicking duties, and certainly two for two tonight to give uh, the Trojans a quick 14 nothing lead with, uh, what do we got? Three minutes, 15 seconds to play in the opening quarter tonight. And Jay, as we always do, we like to thank a couple of our sponsors for their sponsorship of our ATMC TV game of the week, including JP Russ and Son. We'd also like to remind our viewers that the Grissett Town Longwood Fire and Rescue Haunted Trail will be open every Friday and Saturday, the month of October, including this week. It'll also be open October 30th and 31st, which is, of course, Halloween night. West leads 14-0, 3-15 left in the opening period here from Gary Bishop Stadium in Leland. Another short squib kick. That one's fielded by DeBerry. He's brought down across the 40-yard line at the 41. So of North Brunswick's many problems here in the early going, starting field position has not been one of them. No, two, two possessions, two good starts on the field. For the Scorpions, they were not able to do anything on that first possession, but let's see if North Brunswick and their substitute quarterback tonight, number six, D.J. Perry, a 5'10", 150-pound senior, can't get something going on this particular possession. And Jay, not your typical quarterback. We saw Desmond Perry or DJ Perry run for a touchdown as the running back against North Johnston as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Jay, there's your guy from last week, Tyler Tate. He has done nothing the last two weeks except make plays. I'll tell you why. He was as much as uh, Gore and, and Bethel were involved last week from their linebacker position. I think he could say the same thing about number 32, Tyler Tate, who was very active. The 5'10", 190 pound junior linebacker and certainly made a good stop on Perry that time. 
Second and 10 or 11 from the North Brunswick 40 yard line. That's actually a forward pass to Bullock looking for running room around the left side. Almost a really nice open field tackle by Khalil Bland, but a really great effort by Bullock. Jay, only a three or four yard gain, but turned what could have been a two or three yard loss into a three or four yard gain. Yeah, I like this kid, Jaeen Bullock. He's only a sophomore, but does a lot of good things on the field for North. And that time showed some good strength to get away from a, a nice effort by Khalil Bland that time. Khalil had him wrapped up around the ankles, but Bullock able to slip away and at least picked up a couple of yards, sets up a third and seven for the Scorpions. Perry in the shotgun, has more trouble with the snap, but he's got running room around the right side until he is slammed to the turf by none other than 42 Jakari Bethel. Now, now, Sam Hickman. Boy, oh boy. Sam Hickman, how many times does uh, Jakari Bethel do that? Not in football, but during wrestling where he is an all-conference, all-everything wrestler, just picks up his opponent and throws him to the ground. That's a suplex. Do you know what that is, Sam? I didn't until I seen Jakari Bethel. <laughs> Boy, he has just mastered that technique. Let me tell you, that is one strong young man is Jakari Bethel. Boy, Jay, it's not often you see Bethel get his hands on a ball carrier or receiver and then elude that tackle. He is one of the most sure tacklers in this region. Yeah, he touches you. You're pretty much been, uh, you've been touched, right? <laughs> not healed, but touched. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> A brief stoppage in play and the game clock is running again. About to tick under a minute left in the first quarter. West 14, North 0 on your ATMC TV game of the week. Rivers catches a great snap there and gets off a low driving punt. Fielded cleanly. Trojan ball carrier still on his feet and brought down. Jay, that was number 23, no, 21, DeAndre Claraday. You know, we've seen a lot of Claraday the last couple weeks. What do you think about this young player? Well, and listen, the coaching staff is thrilled with what they've seen so far, so far is from uh, DeAndre Claraday. He's only a sophomore, not real big, 5'8", 153 pounds. But this kid's a player, Sam. Some guys, you know, they come maybe in a little smaller package, but they can still get it done. It looks like Claraday may be one of those guys, not unlike the uh, splendid linebacker for North Brunswick, number 51, Austin Wallace. Not real big, but gets it done. Jay, how does this North Brunswick defense slow down this West Brunswick rushing attack? Well, they, they'd be helpful if they can do a little better job at the point of attack. And there's a nice start right there as Medford takes, takes the tall sweep around the left side and he's dropped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a second and 10 from the Trojan 25 yard line. Not, who, not sure who had the stop that time for North, but did a good job of stringing out the play, forcing the running back to come inside a little bit where there was lots of help. So good first down effort by the Scorpion D. Let's see if they can continue it on the second down. That's Bethel up the middle, and he is met by a host of North Brunswick tacklers, including number 23, Devontae Webb. Jay, it looked like Wallace was in on that tackle as well. Yeah. Two yards on the play for Bethel. Good stay-at-home reads that time by the North defense and wrapped up the tackler, set up a third down. And when we return from the break, West Brunswick will have a third and eight from their own 27-yard line after 12 minutes of football in your ATMC TV game of the week. It's West Brunswick 14, North Brunswick 0. Bugs have to live somewhere. Make sure it's not your house. Strand Termite and Pest Control is ready to help you with your pest control needs. Whatever the bug, whatever the problem. From that pesky roach, ants, bed bugs, or termites damaging your house, Strand Termite and Pest Control has been helping families with their pest problems for 45 years. We can also encapsulate your crawl space to stop moisture and bugs in their tracks. We're proudly family owned and operated and have two locations to serve you. Don't let bugs bug you. Call for a free estimate or visit us online. Why did I choose ATMC Security? Peace of mind. With video monitoring from ATMC Security, I can see what's happening at my home anytime right on my phone. I can see who's pulling in the driveway and check on our puppy Sam. 
Most importantly, I get a video alert when my kids get home from school, so I know they're safe. Get 24-7 protection, home automation, and video monitoring as low as $36.95 per month. Peace of mind. That's why I switched to ATMC Security. Choose ATMC Security for peace of mind you can afford. Basically, it's being used to incorporate the North Carolina math standards into a hands-on activity um, using the garden for that. They use it for many different ways. Fourth grade math and elementary math in general is uh, kind of the everyday math that adults use. So when we go to plant our crops or harvest our crops, we have to figure out how many crops can we put into a box. So we have to multiply, divide the box, measure it, uh, fraction it out, things like that. They like being outside. So much of their time is spent indoors, um, spending time using computers and things like that. So they really enjoy coming out and really getting their hands dirty and working out in the yard and the way that the education system is and the money restrictions financially. We really don't have a lot of extra funds for projects like this. So it's important and really a huge thing that uh, companies like ATMC hand out grants for education and allow teachers to do different projects and really open the eyes of students with things like gardens and other projects that they do. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, this really has helped me with um, us growing a lot of things and next year I'm going to fifth grade and I hope the fourth graders enjoy the garden. You guys gave us the opportunity to get our hands-on experience with the garden and doing math while we're learning the garden. We are back for the beginning of the second quarter. West Brunswick facing a third and eight situation from its own 27-yard line. The Trojans have had two offensive possessions. Each drive resulted in an Owen McDowell rushing TD. Best start of the year for West Brunswick. They have a third and eight as McDowell fakes the handoff, looks for room around the right side. The pass is completed. A really, really nice catch on a low pass by, looks like that's number six, Jalen Jones Bay on the reception. We're going to have to wait on the mark. Jones Bay is going to be short. Pass was out to the 33-yard line of West Brunswick, so about two yards short. Brings up an interesting call here for well, West Brunswick head coach it, it, Kelly Williamson. It does, and we've seen him gamble in uh, more you know dire positions than this. And don't forget that McDowell, who's the quarterback this year, has been also handling the punting. Looks like uh, he's going to line up or maybe try to draw them off sides. Nope, going West for is going to go for it from inside their own territory early in the game, and the gamble pays off as big 42 Jakari Bethel rumbles around the right side for a Trojan first down. Well, obviously, Williamson and his staff got a lot of confidence in that big O offensive line here this evening. And certainly, no reason why not to when you can gash it like Jakari Bethel did that time. Great run by Bethel, great blocking by the Trojans, and the gamble early pays off for West. It's like they're out to mean business here tonight, Sam. No doubt about it. The offense clicking on all cylinders as Bethel's got more positive yardage, just running through tacklers across midfield down to about the 47 or 48 yard line. So Bethel with four carries all night already tonight of at least nine yards. And Medford, I think you said, had 41 yards in the first quarter. So Medford and Bethel doing a good job running behind that strong offensive line, getting a lot of yards on the right side. That right side is manned by Tyler Long and Casey Holler. Of course, Gabe Lewis at his center position, very sure and steady. McDowell hands it off on the inside. That's Jones Bay, got room around the left side. West receiver couldn't get a block. That was Easton Simmons who couldn't get the block on Trayvon Willis on the outside. But the carry by Jones Bay may have been good enough for a West Brunswick first down, and it was. How many good tackles tonight has Trayvon Willis made? Very active and busy from his secondary position, but uh, not until West yet picks up. 
Another first down, this time by Jones Bay. But Trojans continue to move the chain, Sam, and that's what you want to do when you're playing offense is pick up those first downs, pick up chunks of yards, get down the field, and get into, the, into a scoring position. West doing a fine job here tonight. McDowell fakes the handoff. He's being chased. He's got pressure. McDowell fires it. The ball's caught. Great catch on the far side there. Jay, I'm sorry my eyes are deceiving me. I believe that's number six, Jalen Jones Bay on the reception down to the 27, 28 yard line of the Scorpions. Oh, Sam, Sam, those 30 year old eyes of yours are serving you well tonight because I wasn't sure, but it was Jalen Jones Bay. Excellent throw by Owen that time and a superb catch by Jones Bay. That ball was coming. Yeah, McDowell really, really put some extra mustard on that one. Now Daniels has got the handoff up the middle. Jay, another nice surge by this West Brunswick offensive line on the running plays that aren't popping off for big yardage tonight. It seems they're getting three, four, or five, doing a good job at the line of scrimmage. I think you're right, Sam, and I think that's been maybe a big key for the success offensively tonight has been the play and the dominance at the line of scrimmage by the West Brunswick offensive line. Really getting a good charge off that ball. West in the shotgun formation. That's a wide receiver screen. It's complete. West Brunswick receiver is brought down inside the 20. That's Nashawn Price who came up last, uh, last week. And I'm not sure if he's a 10th grader or not, but he got in some minutes last week in that game against Ashley and, and showed pretty well and certainly made a nice grab that time. Nashawn Price, number 8-3, taking, uh, taking a little rest now after a good play. So Jay, another short yardage situation for Scorpion, West Brunswick. Scorpion, Third, Scorpion, and we'll call it a short two from the Scorpion 19 yard line. We're under the eight minute mark here in the second quarter. McDowell is in the shotgun formation. And Jay, it looks like West couldn't quite get lined up. 10 guys on the field for West Brunswick. And that is going to prompt a Trojan timeout with 7.54 left in the second quarter. West Brunswick 14, North Brunswick zero. As always, we'd like to thank a couple of our sponsors for sponsoring the ATMC TV Game of the Week, including Strand Termite and Pest Control. And Jay, you know a thing or two about this next sponsor I'm going to mention, the Doghouse Grill 2. Tell me what you thought about that gourmet red barn coffee there. Well, the coffee is good. Those double cheeseburgers are to die for. And uh, let me tell you, if, if you're hungry, guess what? If you're Even if you're not hungry, go to the Doghouse Grill because those people there just treat you with kindness and just give you one good chew at the Doghouse Grill. Jay, as always, I'm going to put you on the spot. Third and two here. What do you like if you're West? I like Third everything one. tonight. <laughs> they can pretty much, I think their whole package is open. They maybe got off the ball a little quick that time. That's the first miscue of the game for West Brunswick, I think maybe for either team for that matter, except for the, the penalty that North picked up before the game even started. So been a, a well-played game from a penalty perspective, but that third and two now becomes third and seven, so maybe a little different play calling from Kelly Williamson and his staff, but clearly, Sam Hickman, we are in four, or West Brunswick is in four down territory. And Jay, always a safe answer if you're talking about West Brunswick in a short yardage situation. Find 42. Jakari Bethel, always a good option. Yeah, Kelly likes to use him in these short, tough yard situations. And, and they use him on third and seven here, and he is brought down. Really nice play by number 30, Bryce D. Berry. And that's a loss of yardage on the play for Bethel, and it's going to set up a long fourth down situation for West Brunswick. Fourth and nine from the North Brunswick 26. Yeah, Bryce to Berry that time. Excellent, excellent charge off the ball. And if you can stop the big guy, 42, Jakari Bethel, the way. Bryce DeBerry did that time. Uh, you're a pretty good football player. Oh, well, he is. Jay, those penalties will really hurt you. Instead of a third and two from inside the 20, you get the false start penalty, and now you're backed up to a fourth and nine. And it looks like that's going to be another 
penalty on West Brunswick if the indication from the North Brunswick sideline is correct. Waiting on the official call from the White Hat. Nice night here on the campus in North Brunswick High School, partner. It, it is. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe weather-wise, fall has finally arrived. It's been very, very hot, but a significant uh, decrease in the temperature here in Brunswick County today. And the forecast looking ahead is uh, some more moderate temperatures. So uh, seems like football weather to me. That is a illegal substitution penalty on West Brunswick, which is going to cost the Trojans five yards. And instead of a fourth and nine, we're going to have a fourth and 14 ball backed up to the 32 yard line. And, and again, don't forget McDowell 15. punts the ball. 15 so he Trojans. can do one of those rugby kicks here. And Looks like McDowell fakes it. It's going to be a throwback screen. DeMonte Daniels has got running room. He's fighting for yards to the 20, to the 16-yard line. And it's enough for a West Brunswick first down. So a little bit of trickery on fourth and 14. That's the first look at that throwback screen that we've seen. And well, well done by West Brunswick and uh, some positive yards. Number 20 on the reception, DeMonte Daniels is kind of hobbling off the field. Austin Wallace with the good tackle, but not before the Trojans yet move the chains, pick up another first down. First down, Trojans. 15 yards on the completion from McDowell to Daniels. It's going to be first and 10 from the Scorpion 17-yard line. That's a really good play for West because the respect that Owen McDowell has as with his ability to run. Oh, boy, some miscommunication there. McDowell trying to avoid. Oh, and he's all the way down at the 33 or 34-yard line, a loss of 17. Jay, it looked like McDowell went to hand that ball off to the inside, and there was nobody there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a busted play, and Owen was trying to make something happen. And good penetration by North Brunswick that time. Chased uh, McDowell and lost his footing, and the result is... A huge, huge loss oh, for West Brunswick. Four yard line, 33 yard line. Jay, that is going to bring up a second and 26 from the North Brunswick 33 yard line. So on this drive, West has faced a fourth and 14 and now a second and 26. That's a long way to go. I don't know how many plays he's got in the book for that. Well, they're going to get a lot of it back here as Medford races around the right sideline inside the 30. Brought down about the 25 or 26. So Medford picks up seven or eight yards back on that play. Again, West Brunswick, good success running off the right side of their big offensive line. And that's where Casey Holler and Tyler Long, respectively, tackle guard, doing a lot of the good, strong work blocking and allowing guys like Medford to pick up the yards. Also got the big guy in there, 46. Don't forget about JV and McCray who lines up on that line and busts some people too. Oh, that's Medford again on a similar play. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage, so it's going to set up another fourth and really long situation as we, have, as we have a little extracurricular activity between West Brunswick's Easton Simmons and a North Brunswick defensive back. And the officials doing a good job going in there and, you know, cleaning it up. And another great tackle that time by Bryce DeBerry. How many times tonight, Sam, have we talked about Bryce DeBerry for North Brunswick doing a great job from that linebacker position? Fourth and 18 from the North Brunswick 25 yard line. West has already converted one fourth down in this possession. North Brunswick brings pressure. McDowell rolls out to his left. He's looking for a receiver. He's got a man. Jones Bay's got it. Spin move across the goal line for a West Brunswick touchdown. 4-12 left in the second quarter. And on that drive, the Trojans convert a fourth and 14 and get a 25-yard touchdown pass on fourth and 18 from McDowell to Jones Bay. And boy, 20 minutes into this one, and the Trojans are off to a 20 to zero lead here at Gary Bishop Stadium. That was a real nice throw by McDowell that time. Hard for a right-handed quarterback to move left and make an accurate throw, but he certainly did and evaded some pressure. And then Jones Bay with a 
clever move after receiving the ball to get into the end zone. Hunter Yance on for the extra point attempt. And Yance is three for three on the night. And with 4-12 left before halftime on your ATMC TV game of the week, it's West Brunswick 21, North Brunswick zero. Wow, Jay, did you expect this tonight? Well, no, you, you never know quite what to expect. Uh, with West this year, they've been a little up and down, more trouble offensively, but certainly not here this evening as they have moved the ball each and every possession tonight. Three times they've had the ball, three times they've gotten to the end zone, twice on runs by McDowell and then on the 25-yard pass from McDowell to Jones Bay. Hunter Younts converts everything tonight, so the 21-0 West Brunswick lead. That means, gosh, Sam, North Brunswick has given up 71 consecutive points without scoring. They got whitewashed last week against Ashley, 50 to nothing, and have given up the first three scores of this game tonight. So things not going particularly well for Darren Willis and his young, injured Scorpion squad. Let's see if they can't get things going, turned around on this special play. Oh, a big time tackle on the far sideline from number 21, DeAndre Claridae. Ball was fumbled by out of bounds there on the far sideline. So North Brunswick's going to start this drive from their own 40 yard line. Yeah, Jay? You, you were talking about Claridae, and, and uh, he got down quick on that cover. At last West Brunswick possession, 15 plays, 75 yards, and chewed up eight minutes and 34 seconds off the game clock and resulted in a touchdown. So the Trojan defense ought to be well rested on this particular possession by North Brunswick. That handoff goes up the middle and it is stuffed for a loss of yardage on the play. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. 30, 33 Jonathan Ruschler in on the stop that time and looks like we might have somebody else at that QB position in the game for North Brunswick, I believe it's number four. And Sam, do you have a four on your roster? I do not. But I believe that is Rob Mill Lowry, who did wear number six okay. before DJ Perry. Take that back. That's back is dropped inside the 30-yard line. Jay, the new quarterback for North Brunswick, I believe is Moore, we're told from our Kaye Moore and his first pass attempt falls to the turf incomplete as he was under duress there. Big time pressure there from the West Brunswick defense. That's a, I uh, don't know how much experience Moore has, but uh, <laughs> he's picked a tough night to get some the way West is playing this evening. That handoff is straight up the middle across the original line of scrimmage, but Bethel and several other West Brunswick defenders are in on the tackle. Ball care was dropped at the 43 yard line for a gain of four yards, but that's gonna bring up a fourth and seven situation for North Brunswick. So Michael Rivers, who is uh, maybe the MVP right now for North Brunswick as a kicker in the game to see if he can't uh, kick his Scorpion squad out of trouble. Two minutes, 40 seconds left before halftime. Rivers back deep to punt for the Scorpions. Kaysen Medford and Claraday are back deep to return it for West Brunswick. It's gonna, the punt is gonna bounce. Claraday's gonna field it. He did call for the fair catch, so not returnable. <laughs> And West Brunswick is going to take over at about its own 24, 25 yard line. Two minutes, 28 seconds left here in the second quarter. And the Trojans holding on to a 21-0 lead. Pretty much having everything their way here tonight at North Brunswick, Sam. I would think uh, Coach Williamson and staff uh, got to be thinking that's about as good a two quarters of football as uh, his squad has played all year. McDowell's got the snap. He's looking for someone to throw to. He's got a man down the sideline. That's Jones Bay, and it's caught. 
The ball is caught across midfield. Jones Bay still on his feet, and he is wrestled out of bounds at the 46-yard line. 29-yard completion from McDowell to Jones Bay. Jones, Jones Bay and I think it was Medford were kind of in the same area on the field, and it wasn't until they separated a little that Owen McDowell was able to release the ball, and Jones Bay again with another nice catch. Tw 28 yards on the completion from McDowell to Jones Bay. McDowell's got that one. That pass is complete to Case in Medford to the 46-yard line, so the pass was complete, but it picked up one yard to the North Brunswick 46. So West back out over the ball pretty quick. Second down. Trying to nurse that clock, not call a timeout. Second and nine from the North 46 yard line. Medford's got the snap, the handoff up the middle. He's still on his feet. Medford across the 10, the five, the goal line. Touchdown, West Brunswick. No flags on the play. And a quick strike, West Brunswick offense takes a commanding four touchdown lead here on the road against North Brunswick with 138 left in the first half. The Trojans 27, Scorpion zero. Sam Hickman. Scorpions zero. How long was that run? It was <laughs> 46 yard touchdown run by Kaysen Medford. Let me tell you, it did not take Kaysen long to navigate 46 yards. And again, great blocking at the point of attack particularly on the right side of that West Brunswick offensive line. Yance is a busy man here tonight on for his fourth extra point attempt. Doesn't get all of that one, but the distance is there, and all that matters is it went through the goalpost, and with 1.38 left before halftime, West Brunswick, four drives, four touchdowns, Trojans 28, Scorpion zero. Wow, wow. Sure made it look easy that time, the, the great pass and catch by McDowell and Jones Bay and then uh, Medford busts off that right side behind 64 Holler, 65 Tyler Long and some other good blocking downfield by West. And the Trojans up big at the half, almost a minute 38 to go here in the second quarter, 28 to nothing. Remember, this is a team, Sam, West Brunswick only averaging about 14, 14, 15 points a game. Yeah. So they've nearly doubled their per game average offensively and uh, we're still in the second quarter. And Jay, the last West Brunswick score before Medford's TD run was 15 plays, 75 yards, took eight minutes. That one also covered 75 yards, but in three plays and 50 seconds. This one went a little quicker. <laughs> Who needs a two minute offense when you can uh, hand it to Medford and just watch him run 46 yards to pay dirt? Boy, that's a hard squib kick by Yance, deflected by North Brunswick, return man, picked up inside the five yard line, looking for running room, he doesn't have any. Great kick coverage by West Brunswick, and everything breaking the Trojans' way here in the first half of the game of the week. Looked like Dante Williams, 22, downfield on kick coverage with host of help from his uh, fellow West Brunswick Trojans. So, yeah, West's playing a good game here this evening. North, not so much, trying to maybe just uh, put a Band-Aid on this and get out of the first half into the locker room and regroup and try to come back out in the third quarter and see what they can do. But right now, it's all West, 28 zip. And Jay, as tough as it is for this young North Brunswick team, uh, the. Oh, and that ball's on the ground. It's fumbled. West Brunswick signaling as if they've recovered it, but the referee comes in there and signals second down. So what has been a disaster for the first half for the Scorpions almost got a little bit worse. Yeah, just when you think it can't get worse, it could have that time. Fortunately for the Scorpions, able to retain possession of that fumbled ball. And that's something that's going to happen too when you've got, uh, this is the, the second uh, quarterback we've seen tonight, and of course their first team quarterback, Lee Harrington, uh, injured and will not play. So just the uh, snap of the ball, the handoff of the ball, a lot, not a lot of reps. There's a false start penalty. So a lot of trouble offensively for North tonight as manifested in a, a, a bad place on the field to do it. 
Also, a big first half thank you to ATMC, your leader in wireless needs in Brunswick County. A big thank you to Community Finance of South Carolina. And of course, your community newspaper since 1962, the Brunswick Beacon. North Brunswick backed up inside its own 10 yard line to the six and less than 45 seconds left here in the first half. And that's a quarterback sneak right over the center and a big gain there. That's about nine yards from Moore. Gets it out to the North Brunswick, maybe the 15 yard line. Yeah, smart play by Moore that time. Just try to you know, get the ball out away from the uh, your goal post, right? Still got a long uh, down and distance situation here, but maybe enough time now they can just get off the field as time will expire here in the first half with the big 28 nothing West Brunswick lead. And after 24 minutes of football action, West Brunswick, courtesy 95 rushing yards from senior Kaysen Medford on eight carries, including a 46-yard touchdown. The Trojans lead the Scorpions of North Brunswick 28-0 on your ATMC TV Game of the Week. I think co-ops are the best business plans regardless of how large or small the community is. The people in the community own the company, they have a voice in the company, and we just go about doing the business of making a world of change for them. You know, we're a service company. We're gonna provide services. Whatever those services are that come down the pipe in the future, there's no better company than ATMC to provide them. No better company than ours, no better type company than a co-op to make a difference. Hey Sam man, it's Jay. Hey partner. Didn't you tell me you know a guy that's got some heavy equipment? I need a load of dirt. Don't worry man, I got gotcha. you. Sam, this isn't what I had in mind. He'll be done any time now. I knew we should have called J.P. Russ and Son. Serving Brunswick County since 1947, J.P. Russ and Son has become the local leader in all your heavy equipment needs. We also haul any material, even rock. Give J.P. Russ and Son a call today. Never worry about data again with an AT&T Unlimited Choice Plan from ATMC. Surf and stream and text all you want for just $60 per month. Unlimited data means unlimited entertainment. Got a family? Get two lines for only one. 15 a month plus add up to eight additional devices for only $20 each more surfing more streaming no worries get your unlimited choice plan from ATMC today ATMC your local authorized AT&T retailer we are ATMC TV channel 3 and HD channel 910 your community channel ATMC TV's Game of the Week is brought to you by J.P. Russ and Son Grading and Clearing, Community Finance of South Carolina, Rissatown Longwood Fire and Rescue's Haunted Trail, The Doghouse Grill 2, Strand Termite and Pest Control, The Brunswick Beacon, and ATMC. We're here for the start of the third quarter, a one-sided ATMC TV game of the week. To this point, a lot of football left. West Brunswick had four offensive possessions in the first half and scored a touchdown on all four. Hunter Yance, four, four for four on extra points. Who did the damage in the first half for West, Jay? Well, Owen McDowell, we talked about his legs and he did run for two touchdowns, but with his arm, eight for nine, 110 yards. Jalen Jones Bay, four catches, 294 yards total offense, including 95 on the ground for Case and Medford. So, West, a dominant first half, offensively and defensively. Oh, a big hit on kickoff coverage for West Brunswick, but a nice job as Tyler Tate down there, the first contact for the West Brunswick coverage team, but a nice job by Leland Return Man there. It looks like that was number 11, Damon Perry, who was one of several JV players for North Brunswick, caught up. Of course, Damon is the younger brother of North Brunswick's starting quarterback tonight, DJ Perry. 
Well, it's a new half, and that's how North Brunswick has to look at this, Sam, and uh, forget to score. See what they can do to just kind of make this game respectable. And that's oh, we'll boy, score. that's a great start. He is off to the races across midfield, across the 40, still on his feet. Dragged down to the 24-yard line. A huge play to start the third quarter for the North Brunswick Scorpions. And that's Kaye Moore who came in at quarterback in the second quarter. And boy, that makes him feel good. Makes the North Brunswick offensive team feel good and certainly does a lot for the disposition of Coach Darren Willis. A big, big play by Moore. A game or a touchdown saving tackle that time by Julian Legrand of West Brunswick. Otherwise, Moore gets six. Jay, that's a 50-yard run by Kaye Moore. So North Brunswick is comes out of the gates firing with a 50-yard rush on first down. Big time run there by Kaye Moore. And then Jay, because of the length of the run, it took North Brunswick forever to huddle back up and get a play in, and now the Scorps have to waste the time out. Yeah, I think they were a little surprised at where the field position ended up, and a little slow getting downfield and getting that uh, next play into the game. So Coach Willis' staff takes a timeout. But that's a good way for the Scorpions to start the second half here tonight against West after being totally dominated in the first 24 minutes of this game. Jay, hard to tell what happened on that play, but when Moore crossed the line of scrimmage, there was no Nobody West Brunswick there. defender in sight. Uh, you know, LeGrand had to run about 50 yards All the way the across the field, sure. So they certainly One caught West in the... A uh, bad uh, defensive alignment that time, and Kanye Moore made him pay. Naked bootleg, brilliant call there by the Scorpions. All the action flowed to the left side. Problem was, Kanye Moore was sprinting around the right side. Big time game for the Scorpions. Moore in the shotgun formation. He hands off to Webb. Webb still on his feet. Russ Gore wrestles him down the 25-yard line. Maybe a yard on the play from Webb. Now how many times, you know, a team gets a big play against them and the next play out, one of your big guys makes a play and one of your good guys is Russell Gore who just knifed in there that time from his linebacker position. Remember, he got big 7-7. Seven -seven. Monty Stanley in the middle of that uh, Trojan defensive line. Tough place to run. Boy, that's a handoff to DJ Perry and Jay. He met big number 77, Monty Christo Stanley, who gobbled him up like a Monty Christo there. He sure did. Stanley, Monty Stanley is a big young man, six foot five, 330 pounds. You see him number 77, right in the middle of your West Brunswick defensive Trojan, line. 24. Gosh, 33. Jonathan Ruschler lines up beside him. Jonathan, a pretty good sized kid at 200 pounds, and he is dwarfed by, by the big guy, Monty Stanley. Third and nine for the Scorpions. Moore fakes the handoff. He's got a man open. That's Webb across the 15, down to about the 10 yard line. Lost the ball, but he was well out of bounds. And that's going to be plenty enough yardage for North Brunswick first down. Another great play call there. West Brunswick attacking the line of scrimmage. Moore fakes the handoff, dumps it to Webb for a big gain and a first down to the, we'll call it the 11 yard line. Yeah, it was tough, Kaye Moore coming in you know the second quarter not really having much of a chance to get warmed up and now that he's got his legs under him uh, he's doing a much better job here in the third quarter there's young Demond Perry on the carry inside the 10 yard line down to about the seven of the Trojans for a four yard gain yeah, Perry up from the JV he's only a 10th grader again Young, young team is North six. Brunswick. So you Scorpion seven. fans, you're probably going to take some knocks this year, but uh, look out for them next year. Another nice surge by the North Brunswick offensive line. Jay, was that 11 again on the carry? Could have been, Sam, again. I actually Oh, that was, that was more. more. That yeah, was yeah. more on the keeper there for about two yards to the five. And, and Sam, unofficially, if North Brunswick can score some points here they will break a long streak <laughs> over what one two this is the third game 
of consecutive points that they have given up. We were thinking it was around 84 straight points. If they can break that string right here, they'd be pretty happy. That's DeMond Perry fighting for yardage. Jay, the referees may push back to the five yard line, but DeMond Perry got down to about the one. He's awfully close. And the referee is signaling that it was a first down for the Scorpions. It was a first and 10 from the 11. They ruled that DeMond got to the one. So the Scorpions have a first and goal from the one yard line. And four new downs and four shots to get into that end zone. Moore with the quarterback sneak. He's across the goal line for a North Brunswick touchdown. The Scorpions have answered two minutes and 55 seconds into the third quarter, and it's 28 to six in West Brunswick's favor, but a really great response after just a demoralizing first half for North Brunswick. Rivers on to attempt the extra point to cut it to 28-7. Michael Rivers with the conversion attempt. The snap is good, the hold is down. Rivers puts a big boot in it. It splits the uprights and it's good. And we got a little life here on the home side at Gary Bishop Stadium on your ATMC TV game of the week. West Brunswick 28, North Brunswick seven. Well, Sam, I don't know what uh, Coach Darren Willis and his staff told the kids at halftime, but uh, whatever it was, he, he needs to tell them again because it worked. They came out here to to start the third quarter playing uh, pretty inspired football and that whole thing was set up on the the long run by quarterback Kaye Moore but uh, good effort by North you know it's tough when you're just getting the heck kicked out of you not only the, the first half of the night's game but losing 50 to nothing last week so credit Credit the Scorpions for coming back, playing tough, and uh, trying to make a game out of this. Somehow, 28-7, still quite a deficit, but it sure sounds a lot better than 28-0, Sam Hickman. Yeah, Jay, after that impressive drive by North Brunswick, you know, if the Scorpion defense can come on the field and force a punt, get the ball back, take it and score, it's game on. Yeah, maybe a, you know, maybe a turnover or something, crazy things happen, so no lead's really safe. And, uh, you know, West Brunswick had it so easy in the first half, you couldn't help but think maybe they come out in the third quarter a little unprepared uh, for what that knockout punch they, uh, they received. So let's see what West can do to come back with an answer. There's the onside kick, Sam. It's fumbled. It's recovered by the Scorpions. The ball is off the hands of the West Brunswick. That's Greg Bryant with the recovery and his teammates. Or Dar they're going to tackle him on the side by the off the hands of David Worth, the West Brunswick member of the kickoff coverage team, and North Brunswick recovers. And much like the Trojans were in business in the first half, the Scorpions are have set up shop at the West Brunswick 45 to start the third quarter. There's those special teams, how important they are, and. Uh, Good, smart call by North Brunswick and a great execution. That ball's on the ground, picked up. It's bubbled, it's picked up by Jones Bay. Jones Bay across the 40, down to the 36 yard line. Boy, momentum was all on the North Brunswick side and the Trojan D as it has done the last two weeks with a big momentum shifting play, recovers the fumble. Jones Bay returns it for 20 yards to the North Brunswick 38. You know, Perry had a little room to run that time and the ball just popped out and Jones Bay, who's had a splendid game, four catches in the first half, right place, right time, picks up the fumble and returns it and gives West Brunswick real good field position inside the North Brunswick 40 yard line. So it's how quick things can change. The, the great down, onsides kick in the first play out, a fumble. West Brunswick's got life. And we've got some uh, West Brunswick hey, players today. moving around on the field before uh, half the offensive lines even up over the ball. False start on the West Brunswick Trojans. That's going to bring up a first and 15 on the 43 yard line of North Brunswick. Still waiting on the first offensive play of the second half for West Brunswick. Remains first down. 
McDowell under center. He hands it to Jones Bay around the right side, looking for room to run, and he's got very little. May have got back to the line of scrimmage. Bryce May DeBerry again in on the stop. Yeah, here. boy, DeBerry has played a fantastic game here tonight. Yeah, the kid's had a nice game from the linebacker position. That time he kind of ran Jones Bay down from behind. Not an easy thing to do. Second and 15 from the North Brunswick 43-yard line for the Trojans. West leading 28 to 7. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left here in the third quarter. That's going to go to big Jakari Bethel. Look at him go, Jay. Boy, he got hit back at about the 40-yard line and just rumbled his way for seven more yards inside the North Brunswick 35, brought down at the 33 for a 10-yard gain. Old JB Jakari Bethel, he ran half that, half five, six of those yards were running sideways, Sam. He was carrying guys with him. What a strong, strong young man is Jakari Bethel. McDowell under center. He hands that one to Medford, Medford, Met in the backfield by guess who? Number 30, Bryce DeBerry with a tackle for loss to set up a fourth down situation. Fourth and six for West Brunswick. Four, fourth and five from the 34 yard line. Well, let me tell you, Bryce DeBerry having some kind of a game here tonight. We saw last week Gore and Bethel do that from their linebacker position. Great outstanding effort. And tonight uh, we're seeing it from North Brunswick's Bryce DeBerry. He wrapped up Medford that time. Again, not an easy thing to do. Fourth and seven, Trojans. Fourth and six for West Brunswick from the North 34 yard line. McDowell under center. He's handing it off to Medford on fourth down. Medford looking for running room and he stopped well short of the first down marker at about the 31 yard line. So Medford picks up three yards but about three yards shy of the line to gain. And so North Brunswick in the second half has a touchdown drive, has recovered an onside kick and forced the West Brunswick turnover on downs. Quasi Clark among a host of North Brunswick tacklers oh, in on that play. So good defensive series that time for North Brunswick. They uh, absorbed the the turnover and uh, held West and see if they can't get something going offensively. That handoff goes up the middle and around the left side, maybe a yard. We'll give Perry a yard on the play. Second and nine from the 32 yard line upcoming. Boy, Jay, this sec third quarter certainly not short on action, huh? No, oh, they've been going at it pretty good. Long run, touchdown. Onside kick, fumble, Some turnover great. on downs. Great defensive. Scorpions. Series got a player coming out of the game. That is boy DeBerry Bryce looks DeBerry. <laughs> gassed, and he's pointing to his elbow, Jay. Like yeah, maybe he got cut or got a little yeah, blood on his arm. A little blood, and I'm not surprised. He has been uh, he has been everywhere here this evening. Moore under center, eye formation for North Brunswick as West Brunswick crowds the line of scrimmage. Moore looking for someone to throw to. That pass is up, batted down by number six, Jalen Jones Bay. Jay, that ball hit the hands of North Brunswick's Larry Hobbs Jr., but Jones Bay looked like he got to the receiver simultaneously, disrupted the pass, and it fell to the turf incomplete. Well, Jalen Jones Bay's had a pretty good game here tonight, don't you think, Sam? But offensively, defensively. It's a nice job for the senior 5'9", 155 pound cornerback, wide receiver for Kelly Williamson's West Brunswick squad. Yeah, Jay, Jones Bay really been one of the steady figures on this West Brunswick team this year. You know, even early in the season when West was struggling, Jones Bay, oh, Jay, West Brunswick stops north on third down for about a loss of four or five yards. And then a defender lifted the running back into the air and slammed him to the ground. And it's going to be an unsportsmanlike penalty on West Brunswick and extend the North Brunswick drive. But more importantly, North Brunswick players immediately started waving for trainers to come onto the field. That did not look good. From I know we're far away, but certainly wish all the best for the North Brunswick ball carrier. Hard think, to tell who it is. I think it's DJ Perry. And uh, it's hard to tell from our vantage point, but 
you did see him get hit, and then you did see him sort of go high in the air and come, you know, slam into the ground. Not sure who the responsible party was or is for, for West, but again, more importantly, let's hope DJ Perry's okay. There will be a penalty assessed against West Brunswick, and uh, North is going to pick up a, a first down as a result of it. But right now, hopefully, and I believe it is DJ Perry is injured. Looks like he's gonna get up. It is Perry getting a little help. Getting a good hand from a partisan North Brunswick crowd here. And Jay, we've seen uh, West Brunswick defensive players, Jakari Bethel and sophomore Javian McCray utilize that tackle, you know, this season. I think we even mentioned in earlier broadcasts that West has got to be careful not to get penalized on that play, and this time it cost them 15 yards and a first down. Yeah, you're right, Sam, and, uh, you know, you got to – football's a tough game. It's an aggressive game, and sometimes uh, a little too aggressive. I think that was one of those times, so – but hopefully, like we were saying, that uh, G.J. Perry's going to be all right, getting some help on the side for sure. Not able to put uh, much body weight on the, his uh, left leg. Line. That's a tall sweep out to the right. That's Perry's younger brother, DeMond, looking for running room. Still going. Still going. He comes out of the pile with the ball, <laughs> but the forward progress stopped the play, and he's down at the 45-yard line in North Brunswick. So two yards on the play for DeMond Perry. Boy, tough kid, Perry. That was, <laughs> you know, there's some big guys in the interior of that uh, front seven for West Brunswick, and uh, Perry, only a sophomore, not Ball willing to go down. 45-yard line. We're at second and yeah, seven. Perry's a kid that just came up from JV, and... Looks like uh, he may be staying up with the varsity. Oh, that's another tall sweep, but Timmy Sellers has got his jersey, but DeMond Perry's still on his feet, and he's finally brought down by West Brunswick's number 32, Tyler Tate, who was fired up after that one. A huge loss on the play. DeMond Perry did a great job to get away from Tim Sellers early in the play, but Tyler Tate was waiting in the wings for the big tackle for loss. Yeah, the big guy Sellers at six foot, 230 pounds, had a piece of Perry couldn't couldn't get him down but uh, 32 Tyler Tate finished him off and did a pretty good job of doing a big big loss for North Brunswick All rest at the Scorpion 28 yard line Jay that was a loss of 17 on the play by DeMond Perry third and 25 from the North 28 yard line but Perry's loose in the defensive backfield he's got running room he's brought down very very close to the first down marker, and Jay on third and 25, DeMond Perry picks up about 23 yards. It's, it's still going to be about a yard shy of the first down marker. Yeah, he's going to be a little shy, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if North Brunswick goes ahead and takes a shot at it. What do they got to lose, Sam? Uh, Brings up a fourth and two. Three touchdowns down, out, out around midfield, a good place to maybe gamble. From the Trojan. I formation for North Brunswick. Almost an offside penalty on West Brunswick. North Brunswick trying with the hard count, and then the play is blown dead. Head coach Darren Willis thought West Brunswick jumped offside. Almost worked, but apparently the West player was not in the neutral zone, and that prompted a timeout from North Brunswick's first-year head coach, Darren Willis. After the timeout, North is going to have a fourth and two from the West Brunswick 49-yard line. Looks maybe like more like fourth and one and a half, Jay. I think a lot of uh, North Brunswick fans thought West jumped offside too, but the officials didn't, so the timeout by Coach Willis and does set up the fourth and two inside the 54 North Brunswick. As always, a big thank you to local businesses who sponsor our ATMC TV Game of the Week, including Strand Termite and Pest Control and Community Finance of South Carolina. You know, those businesses, along with ATMC and the Brunswick Beacon and the Doghouse Grill, too, without them, you know, Jay and I aren't, aren't sitting in this booth tonight, which probably sounds pretty good to some of you at home watching right about now. Be careful, Sam. <laughs>
That handoff goes to Perry. He's wrestling for the first down yardage, and he's got it. Perry got it by about a yard. Nice run there by the sophomore running back. Boy, Jay's a good-looking kid. He yeah, really he hits the whole hard. Yeah, I'm not sure how big this he is. We don't have his stats, but that kid looks pretty down. tough. That was just an excellent run that time by Perry. Uh, forward progress got him the first down for sure, and another set of downs for North Brunswick. So different uh, Scorpion team here in the second half tonight. Absolutely. North Brunswick moving the ball effectively on offense. Of course, this drive was aided by a West Brunswick unsportsmanlike penalty on what would have been about fourth and 13 turned into an automatic first down for North Brunswick. And the Scorpions still have possession across the West Brunswick 45 down to the 44. And Russ scored that time in on the stop for West Brunswick. At he has been so many times throughout his uh, fine career. Scorpion Second and eight Trojan for North. 44. I don't think they want to throw the ball, Sam, but. Uh... Under the three minute mark here in the third quarter. Two minutes, 45 seconds. West Brunswick 28, North Brunswick seven. Moore's got the snap, throws the hitch route. Oh, it's off the hands of Bullock. Very nearly picked off by West Brunswick. Three sports star, Khalil Bland. Of course, Khalil's on the track team and we saw him drop 20 points against the Wildcats in their handover last year during basketball season. So not the last we'll see of Khalil Bland this year. Uh, I got a feeling we'll see, uh, see Mr. Bland on the hardwood this uh, winter. But right now it's on the gridiron and he was almost able to pick up an interception on that play. So third and another passing situation. Let's see what Coach Darren Willis calls up. Shotgun formation for Moore. He hands off the inside to Webb. Webb's got some running room, but boy, that hole closed quickly. Nice tackle there by West Brunswick. Hard to see who was in on that stop. That was a two yard gain for Webb to the 42 yard line. So a critical fourth and six here for the Scorpions from the West Brunswick 42. I'm not sure, Sam, but I think that may have been Clarendon in on the hit from his uh, secondary position. And he did close that hole quickly because there was some running room there for just a moment. Jay, if you're North Brunswick or if you're Darren Willis, are you thinking you, well, it's fourth down. Take back that question. Of course you're going for it. He's thinking, that's for sure. <laughs> Moore rolls to his right looking for a receiver and the pass falls well short of the intended target. We have a West Brunswick player down beside Moore at about the 47 yard line. Incomplete pass and a turnover on downs for North Brunswick. So West will take over from its own 42 yard line. That was Tyler Tate, I think, who laid on the turf there for a minute for West Brunswick. But he jogs off on his own power and the Trojan offense will come back onto the field. Yeah, good, uh, good pressure that time by Tate. Moore had very little time and little chance to complete that pass. So West defensively holds and uh, again gets the ball in good field position. Weren't too sharp their last possession. Let's see what they could do this time. That's a nice play on first down as looks like, is that Medford Jay who picked up about five or six yards there to the 48? I think you're right. That was Casey who had uh, 95 yards at the half. Hasn't uh, picked up much here in the third quarter, but West hadn't had the ball a whole lot offensively. Policy. Only the fifth offensive play of the third quarter for West Brunswick. It's going to be second and five from the West Brunswick 47-yard line after the five-yard pickup by Medford. Oh, Medford hit as soon as he gets the handoff by number 20 through Dev 23, Devontae Webb. Big loss on the play. That's a loss of three yards. Brings up a third and eight from the West Brunswick 44. North had the right call that time. They were coming with a blitz with Webb from his quarterback position. With another big stop. It's a good call defensively by the Scorpion. Sets up third and uh, passing situation for Owen McDowell and the West Brunswick Trojans. Game clock is under 35 seconds here in the third quarter. West leading 28 to seven. 
waiting for Russ Gore to come in motion, and it looks like a defensive tackle for North Brunswick jumps into the neutral zone. That's sophomore number 72, Christian Mongelli, who jumped off sides, and that's going to set up a much easier third down situation for West Brunswick. And, 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 and Chris knew it before anybody else did. He was out there slapping his head, knowing he just was a little too aggressive. But let me tell you, this kid, 6'1", sophomore, 275 pounds. He's got two more years of high school football. He's going to be a good one. On McDowell <laughs> telling this guy's where to get this formation. And West Brunswick timeout forced to call a timeout. A little bit of uh, kind of not sure what was going on out there for West. And Kelly Williamson calls a timeout. So with three seconds left in the third quarter, West Brunswick 28, North Brunswick 7. The Scorpions have outscored the Trojans 7 to 0 here in the third frame. And Jay, West just, well, they haven't been on the field much offensively and have just struggled to find that offensive rhythm that works so wonderfully well for them in the first half. Yeah, I think you're right, Sam, when you talk about uh, <laughs> rhythm, because there's been very little rhythm not much reason to dance if uh, you're a West Brunswick fan here in the third quarter. Haven't been on the field that much offensively and defensively uh, haven't done a real good job of shutting down North Brunswick. North only scored seven points, but held the ball quite a bit in the third quarter. That's Jakari Bethel on the handoff. He is met behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of yardage there as West, West Brunswick has kept the ball on the ground. Every play, offensive play of the third quarter, and that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. So with 12 minutes of game action left on your ATMC TV game of the week, it's West Brunswick leading North Brunswick 28-7. Bugs have to live somewhere. Make sure it's not your house. Strand Termite and Pest Control is ready to help you with your pest control needs. Whatever the bug, whatever the problem. From that pesky roach, ants, bed bugs, or termites damaging your house, Strand Termite and Pest Control has been helping families with their pest problems for 45 years. We can also encapsulate your crawl space to stop moisture and bugs in their tracks. We're proudly family owned and operated and have two locations to serve you. Don't let bugs bug you. Call for a free estimate or visit us online. Hey, Sam, man, it's Jay. Hey, partner. Didn't you tell me you know a guy that's got some heavy equipment? I need a load of dirt. Don't worry, man. I got you. Sam, this isn't what I had in mind. He'll be done any time now. I knew we should have called J.P. Russ and Son. Serving Brunswick County since 1947, J.P. Russ and Son has become the local leader in all your heavy equipment needs. We also haul any material, even rock. Give J.P. Russ and Son a call today. And the teams are taking the field. 12 minutes of football left here from Gary Bishop Stadium on your ATMC TV Game of the Week. Joined by ATMC TV's finest, Jay Combs, I'm Sam Hickman. The Trojans leading by 21 points. Senior quarterback Owen McDowell threw a touchdown pass and ran for two in an explosive first half for West Brunswick. The Scorpions settled in in the third quarter, outscored West 7-0. West lining up to go for it on fourth down here as McDowell fakes the handoff. He's running around the left side. He's fighting for yardage. Jay, has got it. Boy, it looked like he was going to be stuffed well short of the marker. But, man, you've said it time and time again. Owen McDowell just has a nose for the first down marker. Yeah, Kid he, is a gamer. He is a gamer. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a real smart football player and plays with, within his uh, capabilities at that time, showing his ability to run the football using those legs and knowing where that first down marker is because at one point it looked like he was going to be well short but able to advance and move the chains for West. Oh, Medford with the handoff. He is met in the hole by 23, Devontae Webb with a big time tackle. Loss of three yards on the play for West Brunswick. Well, you want to learn how to tackle. Watch that one. That was a textbook effort by Devontae Webb. Good 
play by Webb, who is a 5'7", 185-pound senior. Shotgun formation for West Brunswick. That's a toss pitch out to the right side. Medford's got some running room. He fumbles, balls on the ground, and the Scorpions recover. Scorpions recover the Medford fumble after a big gain to the 43-yard line. Jay, we do have a flag on the play. If it's on West Brunswick, we could disregard the flag as North will clearly decline it and accept the fumble recovery. The West Brunswick offense is headed off the field. That was number 10, Darnell Brooks, the 5'7 senior who recovered, but I'm not sure if this is going against, that is going against West, so they're going to decline the penalty and take over possession. And Jay, just when it looks like West is about to finally put the hammer down and, and take North Brunswick out of the game, North Brunswick has come up with two turnovers and a turnover on downs here in the second half, 13 minutes of game action, and the Scorpions will take over first and 10 at their own 36. Well, North Brunswick still has an uphill battle here, trailing three touchdowns, but they've certainly been the more dominant team here in the second half tonight, Sam, so... Don't count them out yet. Trayvon Willis, the motion man for North Brunswick. Moore takes the handoff. Oh, he hands it to Webb. Looked like Webb almost fumbled there, but he's dropped down at the 35-yard line for a loss of one yard. So again, when West is looking for a big play defensively so many of those times, it, it seems as if Russ Gore is the guy that supplies it. it he did it before, after a turnover, he did it again on that play, stopping the running back in his, in his backfield. Jay, let me ask you, if you're North Brunswick and you have comeback aspirations, at what point do you start working against the clock? Right now. You know, this is a team that hasn't shown the ability to throw the football too much tonight. Ooh, a big time hit. Who's that? 42, Jakari Bethel, uh -oh. with perhaps the hit of the night, Hello. met the ball carrier in the hole Hello. and just dropped number 11, DeMond Perry. Oh, man. Woo! Man, I'll tell you, I, Sam, I, I don't know much about anything, but I know one thing. That kid hits you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he is you. a physical I, kid. I don't know, you know, if he can play college football. I well, think he can, really but why good. work? He sure looks like he can. Moore in the shotgun formation, third and 11 for the Scorpions. He rolls out to his right looking for a receiver. Pass intended to Webb, and it falls off of his hands and falls to the turf. Incomplete pass forces a fourth and 11 situation for the North Brunswick Scorpions. Nine minutes, 47 seconds left in this one. West Brunswick leads by 21. That's the uh, the best three defensive downs uh, in a row in the second half for West Brunswick uh, here this evening. Forcing uh, Rivers to come in to punt the football and back in the return position is uh, DeAndre. I'd like to see this kid get a chance to return a kick. He's, uh, he's pretty athletic. Oh, a high snap. Royal Rivers does a great job catching it and gets off a low end over end kick. Takes kind of a scorpion bounce and it's going to be down at the 31 yard line of West Brunswick. Boy, Jay, I'm glad Michael Rivers is about six foot three because he needed every inch there to corral that high snap. Uh, let, me, let me tell you, you talk about making uh, chicken soup out of chicken feathers. Rivers did that time because I think there's a lot of punters at the high school level would not have been able to even catch that snap, much less get off a 35 yard kick as Mike Rivers did that time. So West takes over. Out around their 31-yard line and uh, 9.37 to go here in the fourth quarter tonight at North. West still up with a comfortable 28-7 lead, but uh, have not played all that well in the second half tonight. Bethel's got the handoff. He runs right behind number 77, Monty Stanley. And Jay Bethel did a great job to just get four yards there. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good effort by Shikari. You know, it looks like defensively, North Brunswick is taking some chances. Just going all out, Jay. And they're coming in. And, and you know, what that means is it's a high risk, a high reward, right? And if uh, 
if they're able to, to get the ball carrier before he can break through, you can take him down. But if you miss, there's not many defenders between them and the uh, the goal line. So, Boy, Jay, you get the sense if somebody like Daniels with some speed gets one out to the outside or maybe Jones Bay, there's not going to be a lot of defenders out there to tackle him. It just bust one. That's a flag on the play, so whatever happens here from Bethel is probably coming back, and that's going to negate just a huge gain there and maybe offsetting penalties as uh, Bethel was brought down. Look, what well, looked like five yards out of bounds there over on the far sideline. Things getting a little chippy out there for, for both teams, I think. And I guess these penalties are going to probably offset each other. That being the case, we uh, may just replay that down. Let's let the officials sort it out. Jay, while the officials are sorting this out, I'm going to quiz you again. When you race out to such a big lead like West Brunswick did in the first half, is it, is it just human nature or, or inexperience? What do you attribute the, the letdown to here in the second half from this West Brunswick team? I, you know, it's probably a little bit of each. I mean, you, we forget, Sam, these are kids, sure. man. You know, they're kids. And uh, West is, uh, look, this is not the West teams that we've seen uh, the past few years, particularly the team from last year that, could, uh, did, didn't uh, really have too many challenges in, in their way to a nine and four mark. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, and, and look, Lou Holtz used to say, don't forget the other, the other team gives scholarships too, right? Sure. So, so North Brunswick came out here in the second half and uh, determined to turn things around from a, a not real good first oh, half of play. So I think it's a little oh, bit of each, but uh, Things are settling down. Water seeks its own level, as they say. And, uh, you know, you, you'd think West maybe would kind of uh, regain the upper, uh, the upper advantage here before this game is over. So, Jay, illegal shift penalty on West Brunswick. Looked like Bethel was moving toward the line of scrimmage uh, before the ball was snapped, which, of course, is uh, not legal unless you're playing football in Canada. But a North Brunswick personal foul, dead ball, at the end of the play pushes the ball across the West 45 to the 46-yard line, and I believe that's going to result in a first down for the Trojans. Well, the official is making a lot of... Uh a lot of explanation, and finally the chain gang is moving. So I think the end of the day, Sam. But, Jay, I, I do believe he signaled it was still second down. So I think we're still going to have – oh, I take that back. It's going to be a first down from the West Brunswick 46-yard line. And that took, uh, it took a long time to figure out. <laughs> First down, a lot of action on one play, and uh, the net out is that West retains possession, picks up a first down in the process. Jay, we're seeing a lot of Russ score on offense here in the second half. Now, I, I, you, you always feel good when you see Russ score on your side of the field. And so West decides it's going to run the exact same play, and Bethel, while he doesn't pick up 30 yards, he picks up a big chunk of yardage. And boy, Bethel doing some damage here on the ground in the fourth quarter. That's about 11 or 12 yards on the pickup from Bethel, and that's going to result in another West Brunswick first down. I think if you're West, you just want to keep the ball on the ground, take time off the clock. And, you know, they had that nearly, what, eight-minute drive in the first or second quarter tonight. They'd sure like to replicate something like that right now and get into the end zone with uh, little, if any, time left on the clock for North Brunswick to, to do much damage. Line. That handoff goes to Russ Gore, who's upended a yard behind the line of scrimmage. That's 23, Devontae Webb. Boy, Jay, Devontae Webb and Bryce DeBerry have played excellent football, particularly on the defensive end here tonight. They sure have had uh, two nice games here this evening. You called their names repeatedly. Not a lot uh, tonight from Austin Wallace, the leading tackler in the area, but he too has been in on a couple of good stops for North Brunswick. Sets up a second and uh, probably lost a yard on that place here. 
Second and 11 for West Brunswick from the north 46 yard line. McDowell fakes that. He's got a receiver wide open. Jones Bay's got the catch. Makes a spin move to elude a tackler. Steps out of bounds at the 30 or 31 yard line. And that's going to be well enough for a West Brunswick first down. What is that, Jones Bay's fifth catch of the night or six, Jay? Five, five, at least five, maybe six. And boy, what a uh, combination McDowell and Jones Bay have been here this evening. 15-yard reception there from Jones Bay. You know, McDowell, really comfortable throwing on the run, throwing on the move. When they get him out of the pocket, uh, he's very comfortable squaring up his shoulders and making a good release downfield. Most of the time tonight, successfully to Jones Bay. Oh boy, that pass goes over the head of Jones Bay. It's not been blown dead, Jay, and it's picked up by the Scorpions. Jones Bay knocks him out of bounds, and West Brunswick just stopped on the play, and it was a backwards lateral. So the North Brunswick defense comes up with its third turnover of the second half. That's a mental error on the part of a number of West Brunswick players because I think that was the correct call. The ball did look like it was more of a backwards pass than a forwards pass. So as you accurately described, Sam, that ball's in play. North didn't give up on it. Pick up the loose ball and now uh, take over out around their 45 yard line. Boy, as bad as sloppy as it could be in the second half for West Brunswick. Yeah, not it, it, you know, it's it's been kind of a tale of two halves for the Trojans. Oh, ball carrier sprints up the middle of the defense. That's number 23, Webb, across the 50 to the 47. Hey, man, I, I you know, he's another kid you, you want to see on your side is this young uh, Mr. Devontae Webb has done a superb job defensively tonight, getting a chance to run the football and looked awful good on that particular play. Second and two from the West Brunswick 47 yard line. North looked much better here in the second half. Problem is they, it still trails by three scores and there's only six minutes, 45 seconds left here in the game as Webb pushes his way across the 45 yard line to the 44 for a North Brunswick first down. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know how much uh, Devontae Webb has run the ball here uh, coming into this game tonight, but the way this kid has played off, uh, defensively and uh, now showing some ability offensively, he looks like he's he's angling for four minutes for Coach Darren Willis's uh, team. North Brunswick with a first and 10 from the West Brunswick 43 yard line. That's DeMond Perry who runs right into a wall of West Brunswick tacklers. Maybe a yard on the play. Yeah, not, not much going that time in, against the uh, front seven of West Brunswick. Maybe picked up one, so you got second a second and nine, and nine or a, a almost, almost second and ten. Game clock is under six minutes. West Brunswick 28, North Brunswick 7. Moore's got the snap. The ball is deflected, and it falls shy of intended receiver DeMond Perry. That's going to bring up a third and nine from the West 43. And one of the West defenders got their hands up in the air that time and deflected that ball. Good penetration. North uh, not real comfortable throwing the football for sure. Not without Lee Harrington. Yeah, Lee Harrington, uh, different kind of cat throwing the ball for, and uh, got a big uh, timeout. A big ceiling with Lee Harrington, only a, a tenth grader, but out tonight with the injured finger. And you know, uh, North Brunswick, they've hung in there. Sure. Didn't look you, like it in the first half. But you got, got to love the response from those kids. You know, it would be easy. You, you just mentioned they're kids. You, it, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. It would be easy for them to have thrown in the towel at halftime down 28 to nothing. Instead, they fight back and, quite frankly, have thoroughly outplayed this West Brunswick team in the second half. Yeah, if they were uh, if football, if you got like a, you know, a point for the first half and a point for the second half, uh, you know, North Brunswick. We can get a, get a point out of this game tonight, you know what I mean? 
the way they're playing here in the quarters three and four. And Jay, uh, Lee Harrington, unquestionably the, the quarterback for this team, but it's Kaye Moore. He gives them a little bit of a different look, you know, with his ability to run the ball. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's the last we see of, of Kaye Moore on this North Brunswick offense. He, he just gives them a little different element with his speed. Well, you know, particularly uh, at the high school level, it's, it's rare when you find a, a kid that can drop back and throw because so many things have to work well. You, don't, you have to have time, you have to have accuracy, strong arm, you got to have good receivers as opposed to kids that can just flat out run the ball, right? I mean, their athleticism just takes over and certainly a kid like Moore has that kind of capability. Moore's got the snap. He's going to throw that one deep. It's intended for a receiver. It falls incomplete. And the West Brunswick defense stands tall when North Brunswick advances into the Trojans' territory. West Brunswick's going to take over five minutes, 13 seconds left in the game. And the Trojans holding on to a 28-7 advantage here on your ATMC TV Game of the Week. If you're Coach Kelly Williamson, I think you probably uh, – <laughs> Tell your offensive unit, look, guys. Don't fumble. No fumbles, no turnovers, no dumb plays, right? Let's just let's just uh, let's let's get a nice five-minute drive, whether we score or not, and uh, get out of uh, Leland with a with our second win of the year. Jay, I think after you win one, it's it's a winning streak, right? That's right. After after your second one. That handoff goes to Bethel, looking for room around the left side, still on his feet, and now he's almost suplexed there, but uh, Bethel not easy to lift up off the ground and then slam down. Big, strong kid, and he picks up seven yards on the first down play. Yeah, host of tacklers for North Brunswick. Again, they're, they're playing very dangerously defensively and winning the risk. But if West can just bust through with one of those, where one of those, uh, North Brunswick defenders have uh, blitzed. There's going to be a lot of room for West to do some damage. Game clock at four minutes and 40 seconds here from Gary Bishop Stadium. Trojans leading by 21 here in the fourth quarter. Owen McDowell has led the West Brunswick offensive attack with a passing touchdown and two TDs on the ground. That handoff goes to Jalen Jones Bay, who makes a nice little jackrabbit-like move, crosses the 45 to the 44 for five yards, and it's going to be a West Brunswick first down. Well, I'll tell you, you you may want to, if you're picking an MVP tonight, Jalen Jones Bay would probably get some votes, not only for his defensive effort, but he's caught five or six passes. And, you know, that particular run was an outstanding athletic effort on the part of Jones Bay. Oh, and Jalen just does a little bit of everything, doesn't he? Breaks up passes, returns punts, returns kicks, catches passes, carries the ball. Just uh, kind of like the West Brunswick Swiss Army knife, yeah, sure, if you will. Sure has been. That's a good, good analogy, and uh, sure has been that way to see me. Not no, this time. He gets another carry, and this time he is slung down to the turf by several North Brunswick tacklers, and his helmet came off there at the end of that play. Brought down for a loss of about eight yards. Going to force a second and 18. Looks like Larry Hobbs Jr. In on that stop for North Brunswick. Multiplicity of scorpions. And the uh, the scorps, you gotta you gotta give them a lot of credit, Sam. Particularly as you have here in the second half for coming out and playing inspired football, and it's uh, it's, it's manifested itself uh, even a little on the second scoreboard, outscoring West seven to nothing here in the second half. Boy, that pass intended for Khalil Bland goes well over his head and incomplete. Very nearly picked off by the Scorpions. Boy, McDowell, McDowell took a shot that time, too, after he released the ball. Not too happy is uh, Owen McDowell. Tough kid, though, Sam. We've seen him take some big hits over his career. Always gets up. Midfield. That pass is complete to the intended receiver, number five, 
Khalil Bland makes the catch, and he's short of the first down, but picks up about nine or 10 yards to the 40 yard line. So you get the extra couple yards that the defender pulled him by his shirt, right? I don't believe so. Not, not really should, that seems only fair. Fourth down situation for West. I don't know if they're gonna kick the ball or not. They have not punted here this evening. So fourth and seven from the North Brunswick 40 yard line. That was an 11 yard completion from McDowell to Bland. So we'll see what West Brunswick does here on fourth and seven. Just more than two minutes left. Boy, it's a heavy blitz. McDowell looking for Medford and he had him, but Medford did not turn around and look for the ball. Jay, I don't know if, it, if you're a receiver and you see the blitz, maybe just turn around immediately and let McDowell get you the ball. Uh, yeah. Definitely not enough time to run that long developing wheel route. Uh-uh, you, if you're, a, if you're a, a, a would be receiver on that play, you gotta read what the defense is doing and they were all coming and McDowell dumped it off correctly. Had Medford turned around, he was all by himself. This is what we've been talking about, that the way they're playing defense so dangerously that if West Brunswick could get anywhere past that first uh, wave of defenders, uh, they could go all the way to the end zone. But North uh, Brunswick dodges a bullet, lives again out around their 40-yard line. Moore hands the ball off to Will, looking for running room up the middle. He's met by 81, Easton Simmons, and 51. Help me out, partner. 51. 51 would be Seth Feaster. Seth Feaster in on that tackle for the Trojans. So some of the other some of the other kids getting getting some opportunity to play here this evening with uh, a fairly comfortable lead and not a lot of time left here in the fourth quarter. That's DeMond Perry with a beautiful little jump cut in the hole is across midfield. That's gonna be enough for a North Brunswick first down. And the Scorpions move the chains. Uh, first down stops the clock. And that's enough for Scorpions, Bojangles. Now's uh, Darren Willis to send in a play with number 10, Darnell Brooks. Brooks intercepted a pass and returned it for a touchdown earlier in the year against Sockestees. We're seeing him on offense here. Moore fakes the handoff, looking for room around the right side. Has Bullock open with DeAndre Clariday trailing, but the pass hits the turf and falls incomplete. That'll bring up a second down and 10 from the West 49 with a minute 16 left. It looked like another one of the young players, Autry Jackson for West Brunswick, got a good piece of the quarterback, Kaye Moore, before he released that ball. Hard to throw when you got a defender hanging on to you, and that's exactly what happened that time with Jackson making a good play defensively. Jay, the first half was really a, a blistering pace. You know, and a good rhythm. Uh, play overall is slowed down here in the final two quarters. Yeah, that, that rhythm you talked about early, Sam, uh, prevalent the first half, not so much in the second half. Second down, Scorps. Quarterback rollout pass upfield. Moore fires that one down the field. It's off the hands of a West Brunswick defensive back. I think that was Khalil Bland who broke up the pass. And Dante Williams back there defending as well. So good, uh, good defensive coverage by the Trojans to break up that pass and set up what will be now third down, I believe. Boy, Jay, we talked about him in the in the pregame, and without Harrington, perhaps the person who's most negatively impacted by that is number 33, Davion seen the damage he can do in the passing game. He's been rendered a non-factor here tonight as DeMond Perry looking for running room, but he's brought down by number one, Easton Simmons. Very close to after the whistle, but no flag was thrown as DeMond Perry is tackled for a loss of one yard, and that will bring up a fourth and 11 from midfield. And a clock is running, Sam, with uh, less than 40 seconds to go here. I think North is gonna have to run a play. 
Jay is West Brunswick, you know, with uh, two wins in a row. Uh, this is what you want to see as you get into the meat of the conference schedule, right? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously you play the games to win, right? And it looks like they're going to get out of here with uh, a win here tonight. Boy, Moore made a nice move over there. Gets a big block. Great effort on defense. Couldn't tell who that was by West Brunswick. I believe that was 43. Jay, I don't know. It's West Brunswick's number 43, but that's not Jakari Bethel who tackled Moore shy of the first down marker. Moore did pick up eight yards, but he needed 11. And with 11 seconds left on your ATMC TV game of the week, West Brunswick's going to hold on for a 28 to 7 victory over the host North Brunswick Scorpions. And I imagine the Trojans will just take a knee here and uh, get out of Leland with uh, the, the nice right victory here tonight. So, Jay, a dominant first half. We had a McDowell touchdown pass to Jalen Jones Bay, a Medford 46-yard rushing touchdown, and two McDowell rushing touchdowns from inside the two-yard line. West Brunswick rode that to a 28-7 win to improve to 2-0 in the Mid-Eastern Conference, tied atop the league standings. Final takeaways, partner. Well, Tampa two halves. So West won the first half very convincingly. North won the second half on the scoreboard uh, by, by that 7-0 score. But uh, yeah, two wins in a row now for Kelly Williamson's squad. And, and of course, uh, North Brunswick still looking for that first win of the year. But this is a young team. and. They're short on numbers right now, but uh, they're gaining some valuable experience and just want to look to improve uh, as the year goes on. Of course, we will be with you from Shalot next week at MH Rourke Stadium as the West Brunswick Trojans host the Hoggard Vikings on your ATMC TV Game of the Week. For Jay Combs, I'm Sam Hickman from Gary Bishop Stadium on the campus of North Brunswick High School. It's West Brunswick 28. North Brunswick 7 from our entire ATMC TV team. Good night from Leland.